and welcome everyone. Let's start today's a new gambit, new aggressive opening line, and this time against the French defense. After e4, black not only using here the Sicilian defense like c5 or Ray Lopez defense after e5 or the Alohin defense after knight f6 or Karakan defense after c6. But one of the, I would say, oldest and quite popular defense is the French defense. e4, e6. So black immediately think about attacking white's e4 pawn after d7, d5. So immediately d5 not possible to play because, as we know, e takes d5, just force black to capture on d5 with the queen or to play knight f6. In that case, after knight c3, black is losing a tempo. And as we call this defense, the Scandinavian defense. And according to what we know, a black for black is quite difficult to reach the equal game. So uh, the moves like e6 and c6 both are preventing black for d7, d5, trying to get rid of white's center control, especially the important e4 pawn. And after d4, of course, white's most natural continuation. And d5, white is having here different choices. So just quite. A popular here move was e45 advanced variation. Then Tarash suggested here to play knight to d2, but of course, the classical and the modern continuation here is knight c3, the favorite move of the greatest American chess player, Bobby Fischer. So he loved this variation and always played knight c3 against the French defense. Knight c3 is also one of the, I would say, favorite lines of another world champion, Vasily Smyslov. So he just showed here the greatest way how to destroy the players like Mikhail Botvinnik and others in his firm knight c3 variations. So after knight c3, black has also the choice. So first of all, the very old Rubinstein line, d takes e4. The second choice here is bishop b4. Today we also call these ideas like Nimsovic line in the French defense, but of course here we have different, different names for that, uh, for that very a complicated, complicated opening variation. And of course, the classical way, classical move here is knight f6. So black immediately increase the pressure over the white center, trying to force white to push the pawn after e4, e5. In that case, black is moving the knight to d7 and ready with all his pieces and pounds to destroy white's position in the center after c5, knight c6, etc. So black's main idea in French defense just to get rid of white's center. For that, we are ready to play f6, c5, etc. So all the pounds break, all the ways to challenge the white center, quite good here. So when e45 is quite... I would say familiar on the top level and this move was one of the main weapons in the opening repertoire of a former world champion Vladimir Kramnik and uh, of course Gary Kasparov and Veselin Topalov and even today I would say 90% of the top players are using E45 but Already 100 years ago, it was quite a popular line here, bishop g5. So instead of moving pawn forward, white is still trying to keep more pressure over the d5 pawn, and in the same case, uh, intending to play e4, e5, just because knight on f6 is pinned, it's a good way for white to fight for initiative. So 
even in that position, look, we just made four moves. Black also has quite wide choice. It's possible to play bishop e7, just very old continuation. Possible to play bishop b4, mark Ketchen counterattack, and even g takes e4, some kind of Rubinstein uh, variation, but when already bishop, white's bishop is already on g5. So this difference sometimes is uh, just good, quite favorite for black side. So let's uh, today, today, just focused on the bishop e7. I would say not just the most a solid continuation, but also the most popular. So after bishop e7, white has no many opportunities, but to decide some something about the center. And e4, e5. So now after knight f to d7, black is still ready after bishop takes e7, queen takes e7, to start the similar the attack over the white center after c5 and knight c6 etc. In the 19th century this position was also a bit popular in a sense to a many games were playing and uh, this line was quite a uh, quite interesting in, in analysis and a, for white, it was not so easy to reach the advantage, despite the fact that black is having slightly passive bishop on a c8. A, quite quite difficult for white was just at the same time protect the center, because black is intending c7, c5, and create some pressure on the on the king side. But in the, already in the, the something like 100 years ago, and uh, here just came very new idea, new line, and was suggested by the chess player with name Shattard, and he said that why not just to sacrifice here the pawn for opening the files against the black skin, because the king side is the most natural place where black skin could be safely placed. So he played h4 and this fantastic I would say idea uh, becomes quite rapidly becomes quite popular and is uh, almost many many strongest on that time players were included this opening into the repertoire I just name a few like Alexander Alohin, Max Oliver, Richard Reti, Savili Tartakover all were using this aggressive opening. So what was the main point? Let's understand exactly what happened. After bishop take g5, h take g5 and queen take g5, white is getting rid of the black's queen on g5, so very fast, attacking it by knight, so possible also to play knight f3, but even more interesting move here, suggested by Alexander Alohin, who played it for the first time in 1914 against uh, the Hans Feinry in a, a German Congress, so 1914 already, almost 100 years ago. So after, after Queen goes to e7 and knight f4, what is having just great opportunities on the king side? Look, the h-file is open, White is intending queen g4 at the right moment, attacking black spawn on g7. And white's king is ready to go for the long castling. White is also intending to sacrifice the pieces on d5. So the knight takes d5, another very typical, typical idea in this situation. So let's first of all work out this first historical game between Alohin and Farni. So, after knight f4, black immediately decided to move the knight close to the king side and to play knight f8, maybe at the right moment black could play knight g6, queen g4. Now, only here, black suddenly understood that knight g6 cannot be played. 
Why? Because knight just simply captures on d5 and wow, the bishop on c8 is hanging. And black is in difficult position already. So the similar uh, combination we will see in the future. After g6, same problem, knight takes d5. So knight fa was quite serious mistake and f6 also already doesn't help black after e takes f6 and g takes f6 and white cannot capture on d5 immediately because uh, e takes d5 with the check but after long castling black is in very very tough situation c6 rook e1 king d8 rook h6 So black cannot move the knight on d7 because knight takes e6. At the same time, white is intending queen h4, attacking the black's pawn on f6. After e5, queen h4, and knight b to d7, bishop d3, white just finished development of all his pieces and at the right time, or white is intending to capture and to destroy black's position after knight takes d5, or even to d takes e5 or even knight h5 so it's very very tough situation for black after e4 queen g3 and queen f7 so Alohin here came with another sacrifice bishop takes e4 black skin in the center rooks are not playing d takes e4 knight takes e4 rook g8 queen a3 Queen g7, knight d6, and game is finishing very, very fast. So, easy to understand that black has no time for capturing the rook on h6 because knight f7 wins immediately. What else to play? Knight b6, black tried to answer, but it has a nice move. Knight e8. Once again, h6 rook cannot be captured because queen e7 checkmate. Queen f7. Check. Queen d7. And after queen takes f6, black decided to call it a day. Just 24 moves and the game is over. So this was one of the most, I would say, famous game played in the shattered... Uh, a attack and since Alexander Alokhin, the greatest Russian player, used this opening very successfully. So the double name of this opening line is the Shattered Alokhin attack. And just uh, a few years later, in 1919, Richard Reti, the greatest Czechoslovakian chess player, Czech player. A played this shattered attack in the Netherlands simultaneous exhibition. Let's take a look at that next game. So, which is also having historical valor. So, black whistler, white ready. E4, E6, D4, D5, Knight C3, Knight F6, Bishop G5, Bishop E7, E5, Knight E7, H4, Bishop take G5, H take G5, Queen take G5, Knight H3, Queen e7 and Queen g4. So today's we uh, use also knight f4, but also Queen g4 is quite popular. So white is immediately attacking the pawn on g7. In case of g6, white also could continue like knight g5 
threatening the pawn on h7. After h5, for instance, and queen f4, so it's quite difficult for black to stop g4. And then white is not only winning back the pawn, but all the black's pawns chain on the king side, extremely weak, all the dark square under white's control, and white is having just great placed pieces looking towards the black's king side. So, the evaluation of position, definitely white is having more than a compensation for the sacrifice material. So pay attention that for black, extremely difficult to start attacking white center. It's after c5, c5 always would, will be met by typical tactical move, knight b5 intending also knight d6 check, also knight c7 fork, and black is in big, big trouble. So, also in that game, a red is opening, decided to attack white center like in the typical French defense after f6. Knight f4 came and black played knight f8 avoiding avoiding white's threat knight g6. Look at that. White already were threatening to play knight g6 win the exchange. Sends to the open file. So rook from h1 is extremely powerful in all these lines. Knight f8, knight c takes d5, so queen d7 and e takes f6. Very nice tactical move. Now, if e takes d5, white simply captures on d7, and after f takes g7, just reaching already material advantage. So black has to play rook g8, and after capturing, white is getting just two extra pounds. So, in that case, knight on d5 cannot be captured. g6, and already came here with another combination. Knight takes g6. So, what's the point? The point is that if, in case of knight takes g6, white is ready to sacrifice the queen as well. Check, check, and Black's position is completely removed. So black is going to lose another pawn on c7 and white is getting clear material advantage. So, just catastrophe already in the opening after knight takes g6. Black played e takes d5. Queen e2 check, intermediate move. Queen e6. Knight takes h8. Knight c6. And long castling. Game is over. So white is not only having material advantage, but also huge positional advantage. Queen takes e2. Bishop takes e2. Bishop e6. Check on h5. King d7. Knight f7. So finally, salvaging this knight. So it's no way for black now to win this knight. White is just gaining decisive material adventures, exchange and uh, two pounds. Black resigned, so this is a Rehard Reti game against Wisser from the Netherlands simultaneous exhibitions in the Netherlands 1919. This is Grandmaster Damien Lemos. First of all, I hope you enjoyed um, this video. If you would like to receive more free chess videos from us, you can just click the subscribe button below. I would also highly recommend signing up for my free mail course, The 10 Grandmaster Secrets to Dominate Chess. During this exclusive course from OnlineChessLessons.net, I'll share with you my own Grandmaster shortcuts to effective attacking, defending and growth hacks to improving your chess without um, complicated books or memorization. So sign up by clicking the sidebar on the right and I know you won't be disappointed. Once more, this is Damien uh, for OnlineChessLessons.net and I'll see you um, in my videos. Thank you.